there's a propensity to always share the good news or else perhaps go silent if there is no good news. And we found actually that it might seem counterintuitive, but actually it's good to share the authentic real news and always keep people updated on a regular basis. Welcome everyone. I am so excited to be here today with Owen O'Doherty. Owen, welcome to What the Fundraising. Thank you so much, Mallory. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you. It has been great to learn a little bit about Donor C recently and learn a little bit more about your work, but why don't you start with just orienting everyone to who you are, what you do, and what brings you to our conversation today? Sure. My name is Owen O'Doherty. I'm the CEO of DonorC. And DonorC we'll get a little bit into later. It's a fundraising platform for nonprofits. It's really cool, very unique, and it offers a way for nonprofits to engage and grow their own community, but also find new donors. But my own background is long and varied, I would say. I come from a product development and design background, but always with a passion for product for good and technology for good. Prior to Donor C, I founded a health tech software platform for family caregivers and for multidisciplinary care teams looking after people. And I ran that for six years, building up a international user base on it. That kind of came from a personal experience as well. My mom was ill at the time. We were a family of family caregivers. So it kind of, that's where the idea for that came from. But Donor C really attracted me once I had exited out of that because it, a, it was just completely aligned with my values. It's a technology piece that's driving a growth of the community all around the world that are coming together to end poverty. And also it enables nonprofits to bring a modern way of fundraising to their business, which is something that's like really close to our hearts. So I've been with Donor C for kind of coming up on three years now. I came just into it with a real passion. I ended up going down and visiting some of our partners throughout Africa. And throughout that time as well, I was doing some design of digital business at the master's level, lecturing in University College in Ireland and also business information systems. So what I really want to do is bring all of that passion, bring all of that experience into developing donor C. And we've got an amazing team that's helping me do that. Hmm. And, you know, one of the things that really stood out to me when I went to go check out Donor C is at the top of, I think, the homepage, you have a few different quotes from users of the platform. And at least the first two quotes in particular were about family giving and sort of how the way that the platform is structured and the way in which you show impact helps young people be able to see how their contributions are making a difference, helps families be able to see how their involvement in different things make a difference. I have a four-year-old. I'm pregnant now with our second. And I was just thinking today about how we start her in her own giving, like we start, you know, talking about giving. We just did, she turns four tomorrow. And so we did like an end to three. We started to go through all of her toys and decide what we were going to donate and talking about which ones we donate versus which we recycle because of the quality and sort of who gets to play with these after her. And so I'm just curious, I'd love to hear a little bit more around sort of how you all think about showing impact and why the way you do it feels so important to sort of building that identity. First and foremost, that's fantastic. You're really kind of ingraining those values in your daughter from a really early age, which is great. And we find out with a lot of families, donors that are on both the community side of the platform, but also with the partners on our platform and their communities. So it really speaks to a lot of what we try to do in terms of delivering a donor experience. So the whole platform is centered around media-based storytelling that allows nonprofits to post projects, you know, have some element of story to them. It's kind of video-based. They can use video and media to tell a story around a project or an ask. Now we have many features within the platform, whether it's peer-to-peer -peer or sponsorship or recurring, et cetera. But one of the aspects is it allows nonprofits to post follow-ups in a very kind of easy, very intuitive way to either individual donors or to donors that are giving to a campaign or to their community at large. And it basically allows interaction with their community that's very authentic. We've discovered as well that through that, A, it allows parents to bring kids onto the platform and say, hey, we want to get them started young. We want to do, educate them about what's happening in the world outside of the wealthy borders of the US, for example, in comparison to many countries in the world. 
So we found that not only is it just a fantastic kind of donor experience for engaging and retaining existing donors, and we all know that nonprofits put a huge amount of money into donor acquisition and developing the community over time. So it allows retention and re-engaging of donors that we found to be about three times the normal average charitable giving. But also then it allows that nurturing of community and bringing people along to show you the impact of the work that you're doing. And then they come back time and time again to give to the causes that the nonprofits post. That's happening from children that are young throughout all ages. And we find that families are kind of, we have a saying, it's kind of see the impact or we bring you to the scene that you're giving. And we found that the nonprofits that we partner with in about 38 countries at the moment using the platform can use it to deliver that same experience to their community and then they can pick up additional donors and find new donors from our own community which is on the the donor community side of the platform so it's an experience that's working i think there's a lot of data out there to suggest that coming away from that old traditional model of giving to a more interactive authentic kind of responsive framework is the way to go And you have to nurture those relationships, particularly in the times that we're in at the moment where things are a little bit slower due to kind of impact for macroeconomic reasons. That doesn't last forever. We found that the average donation amount may be a little bit down, but people are giving just as much on our platform. And then as those kind of engagement pieces are kept going, they come back and back again to support a nonprofit. So it's really working very, very well for our partners. We're kind of really excited about where it's going. I love that. I'm curious, what are, like, you have a few different elements that sound like, sounds like that demonstrate impact and involvement. What are some of the features or what are some of the things that people see that you think help them feel the most connected? Or like when you've seen an organization use donor C and like really blow it out of the water, what are some things they're doing with their storytelling or their feedback that really makes that big difference? The thing is, you know, we're very, very respectful of the fact that nonprofits generally, and I'm sure you'll notice as well, Mallory, you know, they sometimes with the best of intention, they feel a little bit slow to change or else they may not, they've been, <laughs> I'm being diplomatic there perhaps. And you can understand that because they're used to doing something that's worked to a certain degree and they're fearful of messing with that model, but also they may be resource tight. They may not have too many members on the team, etc. So what we've done is we've kind of developed a platform. It's almost, you know, it's very like slick social media platform. So if you're used to using a Facebook, et cetera, you find it easy to use. But we found that the partners, the way we've set it up is that you don't have to be incredibly gifted or fluid or beautiful with the amount of production you do. But actually, if you just engage your donor base with very, could be rustic, very, just a, a quick picture from a camera, it doesn't have to be fancy production, or just put an update around what's happening with your campaign raise, whether it's good news or bad news, because the bad news actually really brings people into your ecosystem as much as the good news sometimes, that once you have that authentic connection, they really come along and all of a sudden then they become more than just donors, they become evangelists. And we found that with the model that we, our nonprofits can provide through the platform, that people who would have traditionally not considered themselves to be donors are all of a sudden converted to being a donor. So there's a wide variety of people out there that have probably never given in their lives before because they don't become inspired by something. And we found this way of doing it actually inspires a whole new generation of people to actually give. And it's really just about connecting. It's about not unintentionally or it's not like pulling the wool over people's eyes it's just showing them what can happen with the impact of the good that they do rather than just taking their money and as a transactional thing and maybe sending a newsletter at christmas time you know Mm, yeah wow what are some things like when you're looking at sort of the ecosystem around fundraising just the nonprofit sector in general of course we've all seen some of the giving data recently, particularly in the U.S. with giving being on the decline. But I'm curious what you are sort of paying attention to. What are you watching? What are sort of the red flags that you're seeing and the rays of light breaking through the clouds? With respect to that data, there's no doubt that there was a fall of certainly over the last six to 12 months, probably going up to 18 months. There was a fall the largest fall in giving in the US probably in in over a 40 year period. Now, some of that is just the correction after the COVID period, but some of it is obviously due to factors like inflation, the cost of living rising, et cetera, and also quite a a bit to do with reducing stock prices because people do 
sell stocks to give and there's kind of taxation benefits to that as well. And we've seen like the amount of giving overall across all the channels, whether it's foundational, individual or corporate, is still very, very, very large in the US. It's nearly half a trillion last year. And that's fallen about 60 billion on the previous year, but it's still very, very large. But what we found is about 69% of that is still individual giving. So there's a lot of rays of hope around that, around if you use a model that really engages those people. And instead of accepting huge, what we call churn, if you're familiar with that term, you know, donors acquiring them in, but churning them, if you just use a model and a platform like Donor C that engages them, you actually retain them a lot higher and you're getting a far larger chunk of that 69%. Now, some of the rates of hope, wages in the US increased this year, and there are some rays of hope around the economy recovering as well. So these dips don't last forever, but relationships with donors do. So that's the main thing to take away. So if you maintain the relationship through the dip and not lose heart, those same people, although they might be giving a little bit less, they'll come back very heavy to support you when they can. But not only that, but they're evangelists as well for your cause. And they'll go out there and they'll tell four or five people about what you're doing. Okay, I love everything that you said there. And I focused a lot in my work around fundraiser resistance and what sort of gets in the way of fundraisers being able to take the fundraising actions that they want to take, a lot of which are limiting beliefs or fear, scarcity mindset, things that are not the fault of the individual fundraiser, but are just a lot of what is experienced in this sector and was very true for me as a fundraiser too. You know, one of the things that I always worry when we're in sort of an economic climate like what we're in today is that there becomes an increasing narrative around like, don't reach out too much or donor fatigue or there's, and so we actually end up taking many fewer fundraising actions that ultimately lead to giving. And then we say, see, look, people are not giving as much right now. It's like, well, we asked half as many times as we did the year before. I'm curious what you see there or ways you all have sort of supported your fundraisers or how you think about addressing some of those barriers. A couple of points on that. The first thing is, for sure, there is such a thing as asking too much, I would say, but then you have to find that balance between asking and not being too reticent or shy about asking. What we found is if you're constantly asking and that's your only channel of communication with your donors, they are going to get very fed up with you and donor fatigue will set in quite quickly. However, if you're sharing news and general community news with them, and not peppering in the ass in amongst that, then they don't mind. So we've built a kind of, a, it's almost like a social network feed into the, each individual partner's profile on the platform where they can share the community news or reach out to individual donors to thank them and celebrate them. And once you take those additional actions and understand your donors a little bit better in terms of doing being a bit responsive or reaching out at, at the right times, You can actually do the asking because you've built that relationship. It's a bit like any relationship, you know, whether you're having a relationship at home or with a friend or with a loved one. If it's always a one-way street, those relationships don't last. And a communication channel that's just like asking all the time is not going to last. But if you can use a platform to share the news, share some images, share some video, it doesn't matter what quality of video it is, or just share some general news around the cause and they understand who you are and what your values are, then all of a sudden it becomes a different ball game. And not only that, but actually it adds to a great increase in morale amongst the team in, within the nonprofit or NGO itself as well. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, we all want to be part of something that's bigger than ourselves. I know that's something we like regrow that culture at Donors Day all the time amongst our own team. And one of the things actually we, we do as well to support the nonprofits is we have like a fantastic marketing fundraising strategy and content team. We've some ex meta workers and people who've worked for Facebook that have come to work for us and decided to use their talents on something else. So we use those teams to support our partner profit, our non-profit partners as well. And what we found is that, you know, and I found this amongst my own team and it's the same with myself. We've come at this with a mission and with a passion and anyone who gets involved in any non-profit comes at it with the same degree of passion in their heart for the most part they really believe in the mission of what they're doing and they believe ultimately that's why they got into it in the first place so when they they're also part of the platform 
they also see all of that and they're also part of sharing the information as well. So they become more entwined in their own mission and then become more passionate and all of a sudden the energy is higher. And that energy transmits into the communication that goes out into their own community and that translates into more engagement with their asks and their campaigns, etc., which ultimately means more raising and more impact for the organization. I agree with everything that you're saying there. And I love sort of thinking about framing that way. I mean, I say a lot that I don't think donor fatigue is about the amount of communication, but the type of communication. And if your donor are fatigued, it's probably because you're doing exactly as you said, just like asking, 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 and then saying, oh, I don't want to bother them in between. But those are the communication elements that are really important for that feedback loop, that deepening of the relationship and building their sort of identity and association. Is there anything you think nonprofits and not, again, not that's a fault of their own, but kind of like a myth in the sector that we get wrong about how we create community or identity or belonging through the types of stories that you share? I think probably the biggest myth is that you should only share the good news or there tends to be two types of communication. Sometimes it can be the crisis communication. Something is really disaster and needs your help. And that, that there's obviously a place for that. But also then in terms of when the ask is made, that there's a propensity to always share the good news or else perhaps go silent if there is no good news. And we found actually that it might seem counterintuitive, but actually it's good to share the authentic real news and always keep people updated on a regular basis. That's one thing. And then generally, I would say there's still a bit of a, people are you know understanding there has to be a change. The modern consumer is a lot different to the consumer even five or 10 years ago. Like if you go back to 2020, there was about a 93% increase in the consumption of web-based video in 2020. That has translated into, if you take out the ask perception for people's minds, but that's translated into about 90% of people expecting to hear more from brands that they support, whether it's nonprofits or not. And media-based stuff is the obvious way to do that. So there is obviously a push and a greater awareness around that. However, there is also still a lag amongst many people in the nonprofit and fundraising sector where they're still relying a little bit too much sometimes on traditional stuff or it's become too foundational, which is important. They're important challenges, but it's become too foundational based or targeted as well, particularly when about nearly 70% is still individual giving. So what we've done is we've aimed to create a platform that nonprofits kind of launch out of the box. And actually we have, it's two-sided platform really. We have a a product called Rise that nonprofits can launch in their own branding. It looks to all intents and purposes like they've launched their own kind of pretty slick and cool platform. And then that integrates with our own community where they can pick up probably up to about 30% additional donation volume. So they're the problems as we see them. And the way we fit into that ecosystem is being allowing them to deliver. We kind of, it might seem like a throwaway sales line, but actually we're really proud of it but we enable them to deliver a 10-star donor experience. And we found that 10-star donor experience and that community nurturing is what really brings people back and keeps them passionate about your cause. Amazing. Okay. Thank you for all of this advice and wisdom. I'm really happy you shared that advice around sharing quote unquote bad news, but like really letting your donors in for the full journey and the way that that builds that connection. So I'm so grateful. Where should folks go to learn more about Donor C, to connect with all of you, to get a demo if they want, tell them all the good things. Well, we like to keep it personal and relationship wise. So people can, if they're interested in getting a little bit of an information pack or organizing a demo, they can reach out to me at owen at donorsy.com. And I'd be very happy to put them in touch with our team or send them a information pack over to them. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time and your wisdom and for the work that you're doing to help inspire generosity and make people more invested in the nonprofit sector in general and the causes that they care about. I'm really grateful. Delighted to be here, Mallory, and thanks so much. I've listened to your podcast and caught a few of your webinars and many of Thank you so much. 